so Denise, of your of your own work and the very rich intermingling of looking, learning, writing, practicing, teaching, tell me a bit about how you think all those various aspects have come together in, in, in your your particular contribution to architecture and urbanism. I have always um, liked to draw, to have many legs to my table of architecture, you could say. And so there's this wide view I take, but also a procedural view which can narrow things when it leads to the, always the two things, both opposite and itself, both, mm -hmm. both things. But also, um, I like to have problems which are very challenging intellectually and visually and aesthetically, all mixed together, and draw something out of that. And then Bob and I together, arguing over it and drawing out. But like I'm almost never involved with the houses he does, and those are kind of, um, he, he's retired now, he doesn't now, he can't. Mm -hmm. But they were, um, there were pilgrimages for him, a little house, he'd try out many things. Mm -hmm. And I was with him very much in the beginning, not in the design of the Vanna Venturi house, but in the critique of it. Mm -hmm. And in looking at various things he's trying and in suggesting it might do this way, all of that. But then later with the other houses, less. And I brought a certain amount of advocacy planning into our firm while we were studying Las Vegas, that strip, we were also helping a group of very, very low-income communities fight an expressway on South Street, which was a street where Bob's dad had his fruit and produce store. They wouldn't have accepted us if we hadn't been owners on the street. Mm -hmm. And I, I was doing those two projects at once. I once, And I was doing Miami Beach, and I, and I was at Princeton, and I mm -hmm. once said to Paul David, look, I believe clients choose architects exactly like themselves. I'm working at Princeton, at Miami Beach, in Las Vegas, and on South Street. He said, I think that's about your span, Denise. <laughs> the, the social planners are my great adversaries and my great loves. They were yeah, yeah. really my friends. They were really kind, and mm. the architects were kind of removed and brittle, mm. except Bob. Bob was not like right. that. The only one I would have taken to Las Vegas. So, and we learned together how to set up that kind of program, and I learned from Dave Crane how to set up a planning program, and I joined those two, but first of all, working on these theories courses, Bob and I, I on one and he on the other, mm -hmm. and we began to share. Mm -hmm. So many of the ideas about questions for the work programs in Las Vegas came out of that place where the theory lecture had to relate to the studio, and I was the one who involved the work programs and thought and uh, requests of the students that would make that relationship, mm -hmm. transferred that a great deal to Las Vegas. Okay. So, um, but I, I would say, for me, the bit where all the interconnection between social theory, urban economics, yes. urban theory comes in your work most to focus is in learning from Levittown. Well, not only, it's right there in the, in the design work I do. Yeah. And you see, I kept saying to the students, don't become a sociologist, don't become an economist. You work out how to use it as an architect. Mm -hmm. Well, when I did, for example, the Palmer Drive development at Michigan, which was a large bio biology teaching library, a large life, rather, um, um, laboratory, a large um, life sciences laboratory for you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always mixing English and American. And also um, a student center. Mm -hmm. And I put these... You know how the Smithsons did um, roads in the air? Yep, yeah. And how um, Rem Cole House is still supporting those, saying mm -hmm. not fair to criticize them the way they did. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I fought a lot for um, the last thing that's being demolished by the Smithsons. I made a little film about that. About like Robin Hood's garden? Yes, yeah. just sad to oh, demolish awful. it. Yeah. But anyway, so I found a place where there was a big kettle hole, it's called, an old lake mm -hmm. dried out. And I found that the, the road that everyone was having trouble crossing was at the bottom of that lake between the main school and the medical school. Mm -hmm. And I found you could, in fact, put 960 cars, this is Detroit, mm -hmm. in that lake. And that looked like just the rest of the campus. And you go straight over without a hump bridge between the medical campus 
where they were saying, I risk my life where I cross, mm -hmm. to the main campus. And this, these buildings, I did many other things like that about getting places which are public, where the public will actually come because I've analyzed mm -hmm. their routes, mm -hmm. I've analyzed their connections, and they do. I've got pictures of them there. Yeah. That's how I use central place okay. theory in design. Well, they, they called me, the people in the building office. They said, you'll be the one who want to hear about this. We have the construction fences up around your three buildings. And the students have discovered the shortcut, and they've taken down our fences, and they're riding their bicycles across to the medical school. Hmm. And they said, we think you'll love that. <laughs> well, you see, that's the kind of right. one of my great joys. Boy, I love to see a beautiful building, but right. I love to see those things happening, too. So tell us about what you're doing at the moment, and actually tell us more about your project about using photography in your practice and in, in the way that you, you're developing ideas. Yes, that's what I'm doing at mm -hmm. the moment, but I've done it all my life. Mm -hmm. But I've only started thinking strategically about all the different ways, starting with as South Africans who might leave but might then lose our passports, you never knew. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to see the places, not just see them in books, photograph them and have a record because you might never go back. Okay. So we set off, and Robert Scott Brown had worked as a little boy with his dad. They had a hobby of photography. So we set off, and we were in England, and we traveled, we hitchhiked. We had a Morgan three-wheeler. It took us all the way through Europe. You don't know that side of my life, working with the Morgan Club, London Cockneys. You see, we had ways of living in London that our friends didn't have. So Morgan three-wheeler, for those of you who don't know, it is a presumably quite a long, low-slung, open car. It looked like a Morgan sports right. car in the front. At the back, it looked like a Hornet. Mm -hmm. And it had one little seat at the back. And it had long, this long since lost its cover. The last ones were made before World War II. So do you have any pictures of yourself driving some, around Europe? Some of those. So your early, mm -hmm. your early use of photography was about recording? Recording architecture. And then it got to be recording the Morgan Club. And it mm -hmm. got to be recording things we loved more. And how... The place I lived in, it had an interesting relationship to city streets. Mm -hmm. You know those, those um, what was it called? It, it was the, the ones that, the, the, the park was in the back, not the front. And Lewis Mumford used to talk about it. It had been an old racetrack. So you went straight from your house into the park. Mm -hmm. And it was in Ladbroke Grove. Mm -hmm. And so um, looking at those kinds of interesting things and documenting them, and I'm still doing that. I'm looking at things I want to teach my urban design students about. Mm -hmm. And when I first went to America, I, I started, I'd been taking warehouses in England. I'm an industrial romantic modified by the Vietnam War, where you can't just be, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm very aware that one of the first um, mass productions, which were also designed by architects, was Auschwitz. So you can't just be a industrial and romantic. You have to be judgmental about where you are. But So the point is, I was learning all of that, and we were photographing in Europe. And then when we came back to South Africa, we did a lot of reading about photography, a lot of thinking about it. And then we started photographing South Africa as if we were going to leave and want to show friends in Germany and England that we'd made what South Africa was like. So I began getting the photographs I now use to tell my students about mixed art and how that applies to Las mm -hmm. Vegas too. And so I'm now making a book on that photography and the ones I did in Philadelphia of warehouses and, and inner city African-American life mm -hmm. as I was studying all of that. And then when I got to California, I started studying the um, automobile city in mm -hmm. the Southwest photographing that and Las Vegas a whole lot. So I'd been to Las Vegas to photograph about four times before I invited Bob. And I already decided to do a studio at UCLA. Mm -hmm. And when he came and we fell in love, we'd worked together for seven years, but we were both of us by then more ready than we were. I was a widow. And then at that time, um, he, um, he loved what he saw there too. And then soon we were going to be married, and I went back, and I said, well, now, can we do the Las Vegas studio at Yale instead? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, they said, yes, please. Yes, please. But you're the, in Learningsville, Las Vegas, the mm -hmm. use of photography is incredibly powerful. I mean, the, 
You were saying to me earlier that architects don't read, mm -hmm. and possibly that's why London for Las Vegas has been very influential, because the, pho the use of photography is so precise in the way that you're framing, the way that you're focusing on things. So yes, I must say this. That book has lots of my photographs, but it's also got other people's photographs. Um, I, I, Peter Schmidt, who lived in England the rest of his life, more or less, mm -hmm. he did some very important photography there, and of mm -hmm. course Stephen Eisenhower. Yeah. And he became our one who took charge of photography. I got to be too busy. Okay. And so that's a mixture. But what I'm doing now is I'm using as much as I can my own pictures. And if, if there's some others, then it's only because I haven't recognized them. And I'm now really trying to say, when I was looking at this, this is what I was thinking, and this is what I wanted you to learn. And when I made these composites of some photographs, it's so you would learn mm -hmm. these kinds of things. And then I've had a whole career of being a curator, you could say, of photography to give lectures. Mm -hmm. I gave a lecture a little while ago called um, Encounters with the Palimpsest. And it was just all about how under the present building that you see, there's like in Rome, very often the remains of a Roman circus. Mm -hmm. And my, my belief that um, in Denver you might find the remains of a Roman circus Denver loves that because it's 100 years old. And I say, look, it could have been a Roman circus over here. They say, we always knew Denver was more than 100 years old. But the notion that there is pattern under pattern, and of course there's the geology patterns and the natural patterns. Of, so trying to say form is a result of forces, not only function, okay. and trying to prove that, trying to get architects to realize it really helps them design not only outside relationships, but inside relationships. So in the book that you're doing at the moment, mm -hmm. where you're revisiting and recomposing yes. the Las Vegas pictures, mm -hmm. photographs, are you discovering anything new again? Um, I'm really trying to make those theses understandable. So okay. it's mostly things like discovering that you could make um, collages that would show things. I discovered that in the last five or ten years, really. But what I'm doing now is making more of those. If graduates are going out into this new chaotic world, what's your advice to how to, how to deal with it? Okay, you are a graduate and you feel, not all of you, but some of you, I see no structure, I don't see where I fit. The advice is do your work, get to love things, get to love what you do and that will give you the structure. It will make you passionate, your passion will lead you where it leads you. And at the end of your life, you can look back and say, gee, it made much more sense than I thought. That's lovely. Thank you.